Is it ambitious? Yes. Are we surprised? No. Am I going to read all of these books? Probably not. Am I going to act like I do have the capacity to read all these books? Yes. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new here. My name is Noelle. The seven is my Enneagram type. I feel like I haven't actually said that in a while, um, but, it, but it is. And that's the thing that we do. <laughs> Today we are filming all of the books I want to read in April. My April to be read. My pile of books to conquer this month. And the thing is, there's so much going on in April that it makes me want to cozy up in like a remote cabin somewhere and leave all of my responsibilities behind just to read and participate in all these cool fun things. So there's a few things that I will be attempting on top of secret projects, secret TBRs, upcoming reading vlogs. I know I keep teasing reading vlogs. I haven't actually posted a vlog since like last summer, but it's happening, it's happening. It's just, you know, things are cooking and I don't wanna say too much until it's out there. Otherwise I'll feel like, okay, I already talked about it. I don't actually need to follow through. Mm, toxic trait, but we're self-aware. And the thing is, I also, as of filming this in April, I have not finished my two book club books for March. So here we are putting them in the first week of April's TBR. My two book clubs, one is Hot Girl Book Club that I host here on my channel with a rotating guest every month and we read books, um, mostly debuts, focusing on women and stories about women with some themes of feminism and things along those lines. And for March, our pick was Olga Dies Dreaming by Sochil Gonzalez, which I will be discussing with the wonderful ladies, Naomi and Kami of Brujas and Books. And they each also have their own uh, YouTube channels and Instagram accounts. Both are fantastic, wonderful. You should go follow them because we'll be discussing this on Oh God, Wednesday the, Wednesday the, Wednesday the 13th. <laughs> because um, usually book club is the first Wednesday of the month, unless there's a scheduling issue for someone. So this month is one of those cases where it's the second Wednesday of the month, which means I low key pushed this off and didn't actually read it in March. So it's happening like this week, first week of April. <laughs> I've talked about this a couple times before without actually having read it yet. So I will just give you the little blurb on the inside cover. This says, Olga Dies Dreaming, a blazing talent debuts with the tale of a status-driven wedding planner grappling with her social ambitions, absent mother and Puerto Rican roots all in the wake of Hurricane Maria. Very excited. Also still obsessed with this cover. This cover just does not get old. And then for the other book club that I co-host with two of my friends, Brittany from Literarily Smitten and Annie from Annie's Book Nook, we were supposed to read Strange Beasts of China by Yan Ji in March for Found in Translation, where we read a different novel in translation every single month across a lot of different genres, a lot of different um, like languages of original publication. Is super fun. We have a really fun Discord and a whole uh, readathon happening this month that I'll talk about like very soon. This was March's pick, which I guess is kind of urban fantasy. I I think I would call it urban fantasy. Um, it follows this cryptozoologist, and it's a collection of stories in this zoologist life in China, uh, talking about different mysterious beasts that just walk among humans in China and what those different beasts are and the different characteristics of them and how they act differently or how they influence people's lives. So I'm 30 pages in <laughs> because I read the first story and the rest I will have to catch up on before Tuesday the 5th or 4th? Tuesday the 5th. <laughs> when we are discussing this on Annie's channel uh, for book club. Luckily it's pretty short. I think I'll just fly through it. Um, but it should be a good ass time. And then the actual April picks for those two book clubs. <laughs> the first one for Hot Girl Book Club is Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Mellers. And I'm reading this with the wonderful, lovely Jan of Jan Agaton, who just invited me on her book club last month where we read A Special Place for Women and had a good old time discussing that one <laughs> for Full Moon Book Club. And um, Frankenstein, no, Cleopatra and Frankenstein is this literary debut, uh, which has a beautiful cover, very fun title. 
and follows this young artist who is trying to like grapple for some stability and recognition. She meets this like slightly older man and they agree to like a marriage of convenience basically so that she can get her green card, have a little bit of stability in her life and um, not have to worry about being like a starving artist. I think this is gonna be sad girl hours. I think it's gonna be um, just like a lyrical, pretty writing, hard hitting one. So if you're interested in reading along with us, the live show for that one will be the first week of May, first Wednesday of May, sorry. So will I read this until the first week of May? I don't know, but technically it's the April pick. <laughs> and then, our April pick for Found in Translation is The Iraqi Nights by Danya McHale, which is a translated poetry collection from Arabic because April is National Poetry Month. And last year, was this a year ago? I think last April for National Poetry Month, I did a whole reading vlog about me reading poetry because it's kind of out of my comfort zone. I don't read a lot of poetry. But when the mood strikes, I enjoy it and I would like to learn to appreciate it more. And I think this is gonna be a really, really good one to discuss in a book club setting because um, according to like the, the blurb and everything about this book, Dunya McHale has, uh, it's kind of like a retelling or inspiration from um, Scheherazade and the 1001 Nights. And she kind of uses those archetypes and themes from Scheherazade and applies it to her poetry with like Dunya McHale being Scheherazade, I guess. So very excited to see how that goes. And there were some other book clubs that I wanted to participate in in April, but I don't know if I'm actually gonna get to them because I procrastinated on my own last month. So I don't wanna get too ahead of myself. But moving on for book clubs, the entire month of April, we are hosting a readathon uh, that we like to call Linguathon, which is the second year that we've done this. Last year, Annie and I ran this as a month long readathon focusing on language and linguistics, because Annie and I are both linguists. And now that we have the Found in Translation book club, with Brittany on board with us, we decided, well, let's do Linguathon again and make it a little bit about language and a little bit about translated fiction. So we have a whole um, Discord, it's a co-op based readathon, so we're all participating together towards the finish line. It's not competitive, but there's still like a gamified aspect. If you wanna watch my whole announcement video and hop on board with us, here is the announcement video for that. Um, so I will go through all of the prompts that I will be attempting and the books I've chosen for them. The basic uh, gist, of Linguathon this year is that we're all on a journey together and we have to keep up the the fuel or whatever on the plane that is taking us to our destination. So we have three different roles that you could choose. And those three roles are navigator, engineer, or pilot. And each role has three prompts. And then we also have three extra prompts uh, for extra fuel if we need it. Um, because it is co-op, you don't have to only commit to one team's prompts. Since it's not competitive, you can bounce around. Basically, we're trying to make sure that the points submitted for each role is roughly equal. So we don't want too many points submitted in engineering, but nothing in navigation, uh, for example, because then our navigation, we're just gonna get super lost and not know where we're going. And we don't wanna not have any points in pilot because then who's driving the plane? I don't know. Hey, who's Who's driving the plane? Who's steering the plane? Flying the plane, oh my God. So I'm just gonna say first that no one is surprised that I'm over committing to the Linguathon prompts. Basically, I wanna give myself options and whatever I want to mood read from these options will be fine with me, you know? But I'm trying to start with and prioritize the pilot prompts, at least two of them because I am like captain pilot, head pilot, so to speak, um, of those roles. So of the pilot prompts, the one is a science fiction or fantasy featuring linguistics or language or a conlang of some kind, or just generally features like language as a focal part 
important part of the story. So I've decided I'm going to choose Papa Show for this prompt by Leon Ross, which I only discovered existed because of the long list announcement for the Women's Prize for Fiction this year. Uh, which I'm trying to attempt as best I can. <laughs> and this one really jumped out at me so much so that I sought out this gorgeous, beautiful, hard copy of it. And um, I had never heard a damn thing about this book, so let me, let me explain. Uh, it kind of is giving me Encanto vibes, and I think you'll see what I mean. Everyone in Papa Show was born with a little something something, a little something extra. The local name was Course. Magic, but more than magic. A gift? No. Yes, from the gods, a thing so inexpressibly your own, which makes me think that everyone has a little bit of a gift, you know? And it's also on this like remote, mysterious location, island, Papa Show. Um, and then at the bottom it says, Leon Ross's Papa Show is a masterful delight, a playful love story, a portrait of a community, a boldly sensual meditation on desire and addiction, and a critique of the legacies of corruption and colonialism. Inspired by the author's Jamaican homeland, inflected with rhythms and textures of an amalgam of languages, it is a dazzling major work of fiction. Also reminds me of Encanto, <laughs> because it sounds like there's a few main characters and one of them like still hasn't gotten her gift yet, and like no one really knows why that is, um, and everyone's is different, and it just sounds wholesome and also hard-hitting, and we love that. Oh, the other two pilot prompts. One is an award-winning work in translation and the other is um, takes place in a non-English speaking country. So I went with <laughs> double dipping on Strange Beasts of China for the non-English speaking country because Hello takes place in China and also is translated. So you can't like double count anything for Linguathon. So I'm just to be clear, like I'm not counting it for both but um, non-English speaking country didn't necessarily need to be translated, but it is. So I'm bringing this over from March to count for a linguathon because I, I only read 30 pages of it so far. So I don't, I don't feel like that's <laughs> really pushing the limits, you know? We already talked about this, right? Yeah, 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 okay. Then I'm bouncing up to the navigation prompts, one of which is a backlist work in translation pre-2017. And I'm picking up this funky book called Multiple Choice by Alejandro Zambra. This is translated from Spanish and it's written in the form of a standardized test. So all of the questions are like multiple choice questions meant to be like rhetorical, but tells a story. I guess you can't really see this. Yeah, so it's, it's told in like multiple choice questions and then there's some like longer like paragraph multiple choice. There's a couple like essay long form questions and it's meant to tell a story. This was published in 2015. So it counts for backlist work. And this says written in the form of a standardized test, multiple choice invites the reader to respond to virtuoso language exercises and short narrative passages through thought-provoking, usually unanswerable, multiple choice questions. It offers a new kind of reading experience, one in which the reader participates directly in the creation of meaning and the nature of storytelling itself is called into question. That sounds like, that sounds like so right up my alley that it's, it's stupid. Like it's not even, it's not even funny. So I'm very excited about this popping up on my radar. Shout out to Christy at my local used bookstore because I literally skipped over it when she posted her new releases on Instagram because I thought it was like actually like a, a quiz book from like the early 2000s. It's just called Multiple Choice. Um, but no, she messaged me and was like, hang on, did you like, wait a second, this seems like your thing. And I said, oh, you're right, I'll take it. And here we are, perfect for, <laughs> Linguathon. The next prompt I'm bouncing down to engineer, which I'm also, okay, tell me if this is a stretch, because if this feels like breaking the rules, then I won't count it. But the prompt that I want to do is translated anthology. And I'm, I want to read The Paper Menagerie by Ken Liu. And I don't believe that this was translated, but I know that Ken Liu is a translator for like science fiction, most notably for like a, uh, the Three Body Problem, I know he translated that. And he's done work in translation before 
and has won awards for his work in translation, like as a translator. The fact that this is an anthology and also a translator author, I feel like we're good, right? Like, I feel like that counts, but let me know if that feels like cheating because I can pick something else, but I'm, I'm dying to read this. I picked this up not too long ago because um, my friend Rachel over at Let Me In The Library loves Ken Liu. And I said, I trust you, I'ma read it. So I'm gonna try and count this if we, if we think that that works, let me know. <laughs> and then I've got two prompts that I'm gonna attempt for extra fuel. So extra fuel, the way that we set it up is that when you read a prompt or a book for extra fuel, it will automatically count towards the the roll that has the least amount of points. So it's like a catch-up mechanic, if you will. And the first one is simply a book about language or linguistics. And once again, I am putting word slut on my TBR, <laughs> who is the author, Amanda Montel is the author of Cultish. Uh, and this was her first book before Cultish. And I've started it and stopped it and started it and stopped it a couple of times now. And I just, I'm like, I feel like a fake fan because I love her so much. I love her podcast. I love like her as a person on Instagram and um, cultish of course. So I just need to like hunker down and actually finish this and appreciate it for what it is. So that's going back on the list. Okay, the last one on my official Linguathon TBR is again for extra fuel for features words not in English. And this I'm going with The Island of Missing Trees by Elif Shafak. This was also long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction. I'm trying to squeeze as many of them into April as I possibly can. This book I have no idea how to describe, but I've heard a lot of people, um, especially over on Bookstagram, really, really excited and raving about this book. And we're really excited to see it uh, make the long list. So I think it's good, just gonna be a good time and I'm pretty content to go in without really knowing anything. Um, it seems to be one that explores identity and like family history and belonging. I know that these characters or some of the main characters come from a background of um, Greek family ancestors, Turkish family ancestors, and also are currently living in London, I think. So I am expecting, uh, <laughs> using context clues, that there will be a healthy dose of non-English words thrown in there as we explore identity and explore other cultures and like family history and all that good stuff. This is also speculative slash um, magical realism, surrealism-ish with a historical twist on it. I don't know, no one really seems to know how to classify this, but I'm excited to read it. And I, I really like this cover and I can't really explain why. I like that it has the evil eye front and center, so. I think it'll be a fun time. That's everything for Linguathon. Um, but besides those, I have a few other books I wanna get to, a lot of which are library books and books for vlogs and books for the Women's Prize for Fiction long list. So I also picked up um, secondhand The Paper Palace and The Sentence. Uh, the Sentence is like, I think paranormal-ish. I haven't actually read Louise Erdrich before and I'm excited to finally like read something from her. I know she has a very long backlist. This I think is about like a haunted bookstore. A small independent bookstore in Minneapolis is haunted from November 2019 to November 2020 by the store's most annoying customer. And I also somehow landed a signed first edition, which is cool. I got this off of Pango um, and <laughs> I like happened to find this really good high quality copy of a first signed edition. So that's like a sweet bonus. Uh, and then the Paper Palace, I think this is literary slash uh, women's fiction, which is not a term that I love, but I think that's kind of how it's classified. I am a little bit not anxious about this, but the, the trope of a book taking place over one single day, I, I have had very mixed results with over the years. And this does take place over one day and like the night before, like a 24 hour span. Over the course of this day, Elle will have to decide between the world she has made with her much loved husband, Peter, and the life she's always imagined would be hers with her childhood love, Jonas, if a tragic event had not forever changed the course of their lives. I mean, okay, so it sounds like a fun, like summer read, but I'm anticipating like if it made the long list, there's gotta be some, some depth there. There's gotta be something special going on, so. 
I want to dive in. This might get pushed off into the later summer, but like, we'll see. I don't know. We're, we'll see. Then I'm just going to open up my Libby app and tell you <laughs> the audiobooks that have come in recently because it's just a mess. It's a mess. I was able to request some of the audiobooks for other long-listed women's prize books, including The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Ozeki and Opa Lenev by Donnie Walton. All of these audiobooks are very long. <laughs> the Book of Form and Emptiness is about a boy who hears like the voices of objects all around him and can like feel their energy or their histories or, or something kind of like woo woo and, and strange and is dealing with like a mother who is I think a hoarder. So those two things <laughs> kind of play off of each other. And then I guess he finds this book which is a book with capital B, um, which is described as a talking thing who narrates his life and teaches him to listen to the things that truly matter. I think this is gonna be weird. Like the, the summary is super vague and kind of all over the place. And it's a very long audiobook. It's like 19 hours. So I don't really know what to expect from that one, but it has a lot of high praise. Then also Opal and Nev. I've heard Opal and Neb described similarly to Daisy Jones and the Six in that it's a fantastic audiobook experience. So that's the way I plan on reading it. This takes place in the early 70s New York City music scene. Um, and I don't really know too much more than that. And I don't care to know more than that. So <laughs> that's the theme of this TBR, I guess, is I have books that I want to read just simply because I know I want to read them. And even if I don't know a lot about them. So we're going along with this one and I'm just like trusting the hype and trusting the people that say to read it on audiobooks so that it's happening. Then I also still have to finish Utopia Avenue, which is another book about uh, like 60s, 70s music industry. This one is based in London and follows this fictional band called Utopia Avenue. And it feels kind of like the Beatles or Fleetwood Mac, also similar to Daisy Jones, although I guess I couldn't pair every music fiction to Daisy Jones and the Six now. Uh, it's super long. I keep having to read it in small chunks because the audiobook is 25 hours long. So one of these days I will actually finish Utopia Avenue. I'm very much enjoying it. The drama is spicy. Um, there's a lot going on and I, I'm just like, whether I finish it this month or in six months from now is is whatever, but I do still have that checked out for another eight days. Then since I didn't have enough long audiobooks, I also got in the audiobook for Outlander, which which is a 33 hour long audiobook. And I wanted to read Outlander with the Outlander read along that's happening this year. And I'm already a month or two behind. You know, if I could find a spare 33 hours, I would like to read Outlander also. I also want to rewatch the show because a friend of mine um, and co-worker of mine just started watching Outlander the show and I haven't watched it since it originally came out years ago. So that would be a good excuse to reread and rewatch. And then also I got in the audiobook for Jade City by Fonda Lee, which is a book I've been meaning to read forever and ever. I've been on a weird fantasy slump lately and I just feel like Jade City will get me back into it. Everything that I've heard from people makes me think that I will love Jade City so much um, from like the, the magic to the like political intrigue involved. Um, the thing is, it's also a 19 hour audiobook. So this is what I mean when I said I just want to close myself off from society <laughs> and read books and listen to audiobooks this month because how am I going to find that's like 100 hours of just audiobooks. I wish I didn't just do that math. I actually have no idea which audiobooks I will prioritize. I think I'm just gonna fully allow myself to mood read these audiobooks this month and call it a day because <laughs> I don't want to give any of them up. So I'll just hold on to them until they are forcefully taken from me by the library loan and then I'll just request them again and that's fine. <sighs> okay, I'm pretty sure that is it besides secret TBRs. Secret reading, yeah, secret TBRs for reading vlogs. Two questions. Have you read any of these books or do you plan to read any of these books? Do you have any words of wisdom for me? And two, if you're planning to join us for Linguathon and or either of the book clubs that I talked about, 
please let me know and let me know what you think. If you are joining Lingwithon, I'll have all the information below, including the Discord and everything, where you can come hang out and read other translated books and books about language and all that good juicy fun hot girl stuff. If you would like to follow me elsewhere outside of YouTube, I'm super active over on Instagram at Noelle7Pages and both of my book clubs also have Instagrams. It's at Hot Dog Book Club and at Found in Translation BC. And also, if you want to follow my reading, I'm over on Storygraph, um, and I'll leave that link below as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are well, and I will see you very soon. <laughs> Love you, bye.